Today we pray for marriage. Almighty God and Father, we adore you. You are the author of marriage and have made it a covenant of faithful, exclusive, and enduring love between one man and one woman. Protect this sacred institution from those who are working to deform it. Bring to conversion those who cohabitate and restore the dignity of marriage and family life to our land. Strengthen those who are struggling in their marriages and protect our children from neglect and divorce. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, and save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The Glorious Mysteries The first glorious mystery, the Resurrection. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he said. Let us pray. Jesus, give us the grace to be instruments of your victory over death by living our vocations in ways that promote the dignity and sacredness of all human life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The second glorious mystery, the Ascension. So then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. Let us pray. Jesus, having ascended to your Father and our Father, help us to be faithful to the vocation you have chosen for us, so that one day we may join the saints in heaven as they sing your praises forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The third glorious mystery, the sending of the Holy Spirit. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted them and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Let us pray. Jesus, the Holy Spirit gave the apostles new courage to face the unknown as your instruments. 
having received the Holy Spirit in baptism and confirmation, help us to use the gifts of the Spirit to be your worthy instruments by responding to your call with courage. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness. Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. Let us pray. Jesus, May the Blessed Mother intercede for us, that we too may be faithful to our call to be servants of the Lord, so that one day we may follow her to the fullness of heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fifth glorious mystery, the coronation of Mary, Queen of heaven and earth. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Let us pray. Jesus Help us to always remember that your mother is our mother and our queen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for our banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be worthy of the promises of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we go ourselves and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. We believe in our faith that Jesus in the Holy Eucharist is, as the Second Vatican Council said, the fawns at Kulmen, the source and the summit, the beginning and the end of all we are as Christians, that everything starts with Jesus and ends with Jesus. Everything flows from him and goes back to him. And on this pilgrimage, we begin with Jesus in the Eucharist, celebrating the feast of his sacred body and blood. Because this is precisely the way we want our pilgrimage, not just here in Rome in 2016, but the pilgrimage of our life to end up looking at that same Jesus, no longer under the veil of this species of bread and wine. We just said in that beautiful sequence written by St. Thomas Aquinas for the first celebration of Corpus Christi in 1264, Ece panis angelorum, factus cibus viatorum, veri panis filiorum. Behold, the bread of angels has become the food of pilgrims, the true bread of the sons and daughters of God. So today, as we make this pilgrimage, the true divine food comes down to be our nourishment, to make us evermore sons and daughters in the eternal begotten Son. The history of the Feast of Corpus Christi begins with a pilgrimage to Rome. 1263, a Czech priest named Father Peter of Prague, who was doubting in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, decided almost as a last resort to risk his life and come down on pilgrimage to his patron saint, St. Peter, where he could pray in front of Peter for a much greater Eucharistic faith. Why was he coming to St. Peter? Because we see in St. John's Gospel in chapter 6 that after Jesus had said that unless we gnaw on his flesh and drink his blood, we'll have no life in him that the crowd started to say, this teaching is hard, who can endure it? Then many of the disciples, those for whom Jesus had been working so hard over the previous two years, left him. And Jesus turned to his closest friends, his closest followers, the twelve, said, do you also want to leave? And that's when St. Peter stood up. He wouldn't have been able to grasp what Jesus was talking about any better than any of the disciples who had just abandoned the Lord. It wouldn't make any sense how they'd be able to eat Jesus' body and drink his blood until exactly a year later, the next Passover, when Jesus would take bread and wine, totally change it into his body and blood, and say, take and eat, take and drink. But Peter had faith. Faith meant that even if you couldn't grasp something totally by reason, you believed in the one saying it, and therefore you believed in the content of what was being said. And so he turned to the Lord and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We've come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. In other words, Jesus, I have no clue how I'm going to eat your body and blood, but because I believe in you, 
I believe in what you say. St. Thomas, again, for the Feast of Corpus Christi, would write so powerfully in his Adoro Te Devote, which we sing before our Eucharistic Lord. Credo, quid, quid, dixi, dei, filius, nil hoc, verbo, veritatis, varius. I believe whatever the Son of God has said, because nothing is truer than the word of truth. And so Peter of Prague came down to Rome begging for that grace, that what starts out as bread and wine in his simple, poor hands, at the end of a few words, turns into God. He came and he prayed. He prayed the first day, the second day. He prayed, the ancient texts tell us, for almost three weeks. And at the end, nothing. The grace didn't seem to have been given to him. And he started to head back north in a caravan of other pilgrims. Because of the bandits in the day, you'd always travel in numbers for safety. When it came to Sunday, knowing that he was a priest, the fellow pilgrims asked him if he'd celebrate Mass for them at the church of Santa Cristina in Balsena, small little village on the main route going north. And he did. And in the middle of that Mass, when it got to the part that we call the fraxio, when we break the host and put a small little particle of the host into the chalice with the precious blood, that as he broke the host, the host began to bleed. It bled bled profusely over his hands, bled down upon the corporal and upon the altar. Everybody shrieked. The pastor there at Santa Cristina came over to inspect why everybody was losing it. And when he and Father Peter were figuring out what to do with the miracle that they had just witnessed, the pastor said, well, Pope Urban IV is right up the hill in Orvieto. Why don't we go and ask him? And after having heard of what occurred, Pope Urban had the corporal brought to Orvieto, and it's now in the chapel of the corporal, the cathedral of Orvieto, and there's an image of what you can see right there in your program. Peter had had his prayer answered. His Eucharistic faith was confirmed by that miracle. You can almost hear him after the centuries explaining what had occurred to Pope Urban and more or less saying, bread doesn't bleed. From that day, 752 years ago to today, the church celebrates this great feast. And we celebrate not because of a miracle that happened to a Czech priest. We don't have to accept all of what I just told you to celebrate this feast, what we do have to accept as Catholics is what that miracle pointed to, that after the words of consecration, there's no longer any bread and wine, just the appearances of bread and wine, but God himself in his totality, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. This leads us to want to cry out with St. Thomas, as we did at the very beginning of this Mass in the Panis Angelicus, O res mirabilis, O mind-blowing reality, manducat dominum pauperit servus humilis. A poor and humble servant eats the Lord. There is no more wonderful reality. St. John Vianney, the patron saint of parish priests, once said, if God had given us the same command he had given Solomon to ask for whatever you want, as high as the heavens above, as low as the netherworld. We would have never dreamed of asking God, come into our world, take on our own flesh. And not just that, but be tortured for our salvation. And then make a way so that we're able to become divinized, so that we're able to become like you through communion, so that we might literally become who we eat. We would have never, even if given a thousand requests, come up with something like that. But St. John Vianney said, what we would have never dared think or ask, God has in fact done. And that's what we mark today. The beginning of that sequence, St. Thomas wrote, 
quantum potes tantum aude. Whatever you can do, dare to do that much and more, because not all the praise in the world is sufficient for what we celebrate. This incredible miracle of love, that God himself, who saved us, wants to feed us. He wants to accompany us, not just on the outside, but on the inside. He wants to change us thoroughly. And greater than the Blessed Virgin Mary from the hands of the Apostle St. John, greater than all the saints throughout the centuries combined, hungered to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. Jesus desires to give himself to us in Holy Communion. And he becomes so humble to do so. On our part, we should respond to this divine gift by doing all we can to allow God to love us in this way, to conform ourselves to this res mirabilis. From the earliest days of the church, there was a saying that Pope St. John Paul II turned into the title of his encyclical 12 years ago on the Holy Eucharist, Ecclesia de Eucharistia Vivet. The church lives off the Eucharist. Each one of us is called to live off of Jesus' body and blood, to draw our very life from Jesus who is the source and the summit of that existence. And we're called to make choices consistent with this reality. Many times we don't. I remember a little under a year ago when Pope Francis was coming to the United Nations, I was more or less in charge of the very few tickets we would have for the various events. And everybody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody who knew any of us working in the office was calling on up asking for favors to be done. So there was actually a Catholic prime minister who had me on the phone and was trying to twist the arm in order to be able to get a ticket to be present inside when Pope Francis was coming. Because it was, it was an ex-prime minister but a Catholic wasn't going to get one of the delegation seats inside. And I said, I don't think it's going to be possible. And I explained all the other circumstances and who was asking. But I said, I've got really good no- news for you. The person said, what? I said, right across the street from the UN, Pope Francis' boss is there 24 hours a day. And the person had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> I said, the King of Kings is across the street from the United Nations just waiting for you. So much more important than meeting the 266 Peter. person laughed and thought I was pulling his leg, and I wasn't. It's true. But do we align our lives to this reality? Pope Benedict used to love to tell the story of the martyrs of Abitin, Tunisia. In 304, as Liz was telling us before, the same persecution under which St. Agnes was martyred a short distance from here. The local prefect, who knew the 49 Christians in Abitin, tipped them off that if they convened on Sunday morning, he'd have no choice at the risk of his own life but to arrest them and send them to Carthage to be tried, and unless they burned incense before a statue of the pagan god, to be summarily executed. They thanked him very much for his kindness in sharing this word with them. And then on Sunday morning at dawn, the 49 Christians, every single one of them, assembled. The prefect waited for Mass to be done because it would be the last real action they would do in life. And he went up to the oldest of them and said, I tried to save your life. I tipped you off. I have no choice but to arrest you and send you to Carthage, and there you will die. Why? Why? And the oldest of them, who was happily named Octavius Felix, stepped forward and said, in words that are now famous, sine dominico non possumus. is a little play on words. Without the Lord, without dominus, on Sunday, dominicus, we can't make it. In other words, we'd rather die physically and live spiritually than suffocate spiritually and keep breathing physically. That's what it means, in a sense, to live off the Eucharist. It means we would die spiritually if we weren't in communion 
with the Lord Jesus in the Eucharist. On everything that I'll preach to you this week, I'm a hypocrite with one exception. When this light bulb went off for me as an 18-year-old kid at Harvard, that it really is Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, and I simply asked myself the question, is there anything more important than I could be doing on a Monday or a Thursday or a Saturday than meeting God and receiving God inside? That day, September 24th, 1988, until today, I have never once gone without Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. I don't even want to think of what it would be like to have a day without him. This is what it means to draw our life from the Eucharist, even if we can't physically be present, that we have a hunger to unite all that we're doing with Jesus whom we receive. Church encourages us to conform our whole life, bringing it into a holy communion with the Lord. On Wednesday, we'll have the joy to celebrate the feast of St. Justin Martyr. And in the 150s, he wrote a treatise to the emperor, Marcus Aurelius, trying to persuade him to become a Christian. And he explained what Christians do at Mass and how Christians approach the reality of Jesus in Holy Communion. And he said, no one is allowed to partake in the Eucharist except one who believes the things we teach are true, who has received the washing of forgiveness of sins and of rebirth, and who lives as Christ handed down to us. He's talking about a threefold communion, a doctrinal communion, believing what is taught, a sacramental communion, being washed in that bath of regeneration and living in conformity with that baptism, and a moral communion, living as Christ has commanded us. Loving as he loves, cutting out of our life whatever leads us to sin. St. Justin was calling the first Christians and even the emperor to bring their whole life, their mind, their words, their heart, even their needs, in communion with the reality that we celebrate, that God himself comes down, not to remain just a part of our life, but to become truly its root and center. This is what we mark. We also mark how the church wants us who who have captured this reality to try to bring this greatest news ever imaginable out to others so that we can help them likewise conform their reality to God who becomes so small to enter into communion with us. If we really believe this is God, If we really believe, as St. Irenaeus said in 107, that this is the medicine of immortality, then how could we possibly keep this gift to ourselves? We would be no better than third world dictators who allow the malaria medicine to become corrupted in an airport when people are still dying of malaria. We've got this medicine of immortality, but the Lord wants us to go out as the nurses of the divine physician to bring that to a suffering world. Today's gospel, in the miracle of the multiplication of loaves and fish, that foreshadowed how Jesus wants to feed us with his body and blood, Jesus said to the apostles, give them some food yourselves. And they begin with their very meager offerings, received from a boy with five loaves and two fish, but then gave them the food Christ himself miraculously multiplied. So with regard to the Holy Eucharist, Jesus wants to begin with what we have. Five loaves, two fish. Just a few breadcrumbs and a tiny little sardine if that's all we have. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. To present that to him, our life, so that he can multiply it. And we can in turn bring him to feed the world's spiritual hungers. Ecce panis angelorum factus cibus viatorum veri panis filiorum. The most important part of our pilgrimage, the real highlight, ought to be the celebration each day of the Holy Eucharist. We'll see many beautiful churches. We'll behold some of the greatest artwork of all time. We'll meet some very important people. But each day we have a chance to meet God who seeks to make 
make us his splendid temple and adorn us with his grace. The bread of angels has become the food of pilgrims in order to make us true sons and daughters of God. And this gift here is meant to lead us to another. We saw at San Luigi dei Franceschi what Liz pointed out to us. The light coming from the altar, coming out above Christ, drawing Matthew from darkness into God's wonderful light. And it's through the light shining through the host that God wishes to draw us to that place where there will be no darkness, where Christ himself will be the Lamb. Jesus said when he was prophesying that we were to gnaw on his flesh and drink his blood, that whoever did so would live forever. Eating Jesus' body and blood is more than a magical act of digestion. Because as St. Paul told the Corinthians and tells us, anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment. And we'll have to answer for the body and blood of the Lord. In other words, for his death, which was a result of sin. Therefore, we need to discern that we're consuming him without attachment to sin, without being in communion with anything or anyone that can't be ordered to him at that point. St. Thomas says in the sequence that the bread of life becomes the bread of death for those who receive him unworthily. So it's not a magical act. But when we receive the Lord seeking to unite our life to his, when we allow his holy life to grow within, then Jesus promises us that we'll never lose that life. And this pilgrimage in Rome and the Chivas Viatorum we receive will lead us to the fulfillment of the pilgrimage of life as we will adore forever with all the angels and saints, the Panis Angelorum. Regardless of whether we've come here on this pilgrimage with burning faith that impacts already our hearts, heads, and body parts, or whether we've come like Peter of Prague with some questions and doubts. The Lord wants to help us leave this pilgrimage changed, to depart with greater faith in his daily accompaniment, his daily gift of himself as food for our journey on pilgrimage through life to his eternal right side. St. Thomas finished the hymn for this feast, popularly known as we sang at the beginning of Mass by the words of the fifth verse, Panis Angelicus, with the words that will continue to guide our steps during this week and beyond, not just leading us to the light that comes from the altar, but to the light that shines forever. Peer to us, semitas, through your steps. Duke nos quotendimus, lead us in the way to which we're tending. Ad lucem quam inhabitas, to the light where you dwell. This pilgrimage is a journey starting from the Eucharist more and more into sacramental, doctrinal, and moral light of Christ. The light that draws us toward the unending luminescence of the Sacrum Convivium, the sacred sacred banquet of heaven. And Jesus has, has called us all to follow him on that Eucharistic path. O res mirabilis, manducat dominum. How pair its service humilies. Oh, what a wondrous reality. We, servants of the Lord, today have the chance to eat him. Praise be Jesus Christ.